jump here guys and today we're talking about the ingenuity copter that is on the surface of mars as we speak that's right nasa along with the rover project that's sent up there has also sent a small copter that is going to be doing some flying missions the first powered flights on another planet in history let's talk about the top things to know about this ingenuity copter first of all Get to the chopper! this craft the ingenuity weighs about 1.8 kilograms which is about 1800 grams now this is an fr7 long range quadcopter with seven inch blades if i were to put on this gopro hero 9 strap on these two batteries and a can of delicious craft beer that would be approximately 1800 grams to give you an idea of just how light that thing is this is pretty much equivalent now that thing has to fly in one percent of the atmosphere that this craft flies in that's right the martian atmosphere is only one percent that means there's so much farther air and in a bladed craft you need to be able to push that air in order to create the lift to get you off the ground. That's equivalent to a helicopter flying on Earth at about 100,000 feet. The record currently is only 45,000 feet. That's how much of a stretch it is. There's essentially no helicopters on Earth that can do that equivalent flight. So they really had to come up with something special in order to accomplish this. Now, there is one thing that does help them, and that's that the gravity on Mars is only 38% of what it is on Earth. The Ingenuity has two blades, which are about 48 inches long. They're made of a foam core with a carbon fiber shell. Now, those blades are gonna spin at about 23 to 2900 rotations per minute. A typical full-size helicopter only rotates its blades about 500 rpms now these because they're smaller actually have to rotate faster to create that amount of lift so these seven inch blades rotate at about 40,000 rpms the ingenuity's goal is to go on five flights each flight is going to be about 90 seconds long now if you look at the craft it has an array of solar panels at the top as well as the antennas that are going to be allowing it to transmit data back and forth that means that the flights are actually short the flight of that long-range quadcopter could be about 20 minutes but ingenuity is only going to fly for about 90 seconds that's because there's limited battery capacity on board each battery will charge and it will take about 24 ish hours for it to charge back up to go on another 90 second flight one thing that's kind of cool is that the first flight is just going to be going up staying still and going back down they're doing what we would call a test hover we do that when we build a drone just to make sure all of everything is flying right you don't want to just fly your drone really fast or really far because if something's wrong it's going to crash you want to do a test hover make sure that it is operating as you expect before you actually send it on an initial first flight and nasa's doing the same thing very cool now, for our drones, we control them fully manually with a controller. NASA can't do that because the time it takes for data to go back and forth is 20 minutes. Now on the DJI FPV system, we have about 30 milliseconds of latency. The latency on this drone is 20 milliseconds. So imagine if you put your stick to go up and you had to wait 20 minutes to see what it looked like. You would crash immediately. So this copter is fully autonomous and it has an array of sensors. The sensors on board are a gyro, accelerometer, altimeter. Of course, it has a camera and an inclometer. Now, this is a flight controller like the one that in that craft I showed you. This also has a processor on board. There's an F7 processor here. There's also a gyro. There's also an accelerometer. This costs about $20. So you can actually build your own craft for a really expensive, inexpensive price. The total cost of that is about $350. How much did the Ingenuity cost? $80 million. Ooh, the price tag is a bit steep. And it's going to cost another $5 million essentially to operate and run the mission. Um, but the science that you'll be able to get back is going to be extraordinary. 
you see it's not just the science of gathering those images it's actually going to be able to fly ahead at times of the rover to help it do its mission even better in the initial in the last few rovers that we sent up to mars they would kind of have to navigate as they went by them having an aerial view of what they're going towards they can really help navigate it in the most efficient path and do the most science per mile so to speak now as we mentioned this antenna and the solar panels are on top below that is actually all the control system and batteries the batteries surround those control boards now the control boards operating will naturally create some heat speaking of heat though that's one of the main missions on flying on mars one of the main mission constraints is because it is so much colder than earth and batteries perform worse and worse in the cold remember that time the snowstorm came and your car wouldn't start because the battery wouldn't charge they're gonna have those same issues on mars guys and the way around it is by heating everything up so the battery power is actually gonna be spent two thirds just to keep everything warm enough to operate and you only have one third of that battery capacity left for the flights itself now you may not know this but in my younger years i actually did spend four years working in a nasa robotics lab out in johnson space center so i did get to do some mars rover testing and i primarily actually worked on the robonaut project you see a young john of about 19 years of age their full NASA employment story at 50,000 subscribers. So subscribe now if you wanna hear that full story. So that's just a quick summary of the craft. The first of those five flights should be coming in the next several days or weeks. They gotta wait for a good weather day on Mars, just like we do when we fly our RC crafts down here. If you'd like to see more of this science-based content that has to do with drones, leave me a comment below. We'll keep doing them. I'm gonna do a follow-up once they actually start making some of those flights and maybe we can even take a look at the footage. These guys are gonna science the shit out of this thing. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. Thanks guys.